Hey guys, we're going to be doing um, this PowerPoint of intensive and extensive properties. You do have fill in the blank notes in your digital interactive notebook that you'll need to be filling in, but I just wanted to kind of give you a rundown of what I'm saying in these slides. I promise I'm not going to read it to you, but I am going to go through all of it. So this whole unit is about the different properties of matter, and we've got a lot of stuff in here. Some you're familiar with, some you may not be, so just give it some time if um, you're like, I already know this. So we're going to start talking about physical properties. So there's extensive properties and there's intensive properties. Um, I'm going to focus on extensive to start with. All right, so when we're talking about extensive properties, this is something that if you have a larger amount of it, it gets bigger or if you have a smaller amount of it, it gets smaller. So I'm gonna talk more about that in a minute. Intensive properties is something that stays the same no matter how much of the object you have. So when we're talking about extensive properties, extensive properties is going to be M, V, L, and E. There's two other ones that we don't talk about and you will learn these in high school, but we will be focused on the M, V, L, in the E. So this is mass, volume, length, and energy. So the first one is going to be mass. So if you have like a large brick of gold, it's still gold, but the bigger the brick of gold, the more mass that it has. See that one's pretty obvious. The smaller it is, the smaller the mass. But length, same thing, not but length, just length. Length or width or height, those are all measurements of length, something that you use a ruler for. Well, if you have more of something, then the length gets bigger. If you have less of it, it gets smaller. See, that's easy. Volume, again, if it is bigger, it's gonna have more. If it is smaller, it's gonna get smaller. So it's something that changes. And energy, this is one we haven't talked much about. You learned about this in sixth grade. A little bit we're gonna do a whole lot of kinetic and potential energy in this class but the bigger it is the more energy it has whatever we're talking about there don't fret too much about the energy part to it we'll get to that these are some helpful hints for measuring because we do measure quite a bit in this class so definitely know how to read a triple beam balance know how to read a graduated cylinder know how to find the volume of a block using length width and height and know how to do water displacement. So if I put a T-Rex into a graduated cylinder, I know, but if I put a T-Rex into a graduated cylinder and it goes up, you can find the water displacement volume. All right, so that's the whole rundown that you need to know and remember for measurement and extensive properties. It's not that big of a deal because these that's pretty simple. Let me get to intensive. This may be some new stuff. Okay, so again, that was that MVL in E. I think my slides are a little out of order. I might fix that, but be patient with me. Now let's talk about intensive properties. So intensive properties are things that it doesn't matter how much or how small you have it, it's always going to stay the same. It's because of what its internal structure is like. The three biggest ones that we have are going to be color, phase change and density, but we might talk about a few more. Not going to talk about this in here, but you will have a Quizlet there. Okay, so when we're talking about density, okay, I paused myself, so I think I was in the middle of a sentence. I don't really know, but I'm back. So when I'm think when we're talking about density, density is a huge misconception. People think, oh, well, if it has a bigger mass and it has a bigger volume, then it's going to have a bigger density. No, 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 no. We don't think like that. So the density of an object is the same, no matter if you have a small amount or a big amount. So for example, the density of water is always one. It doesn't matter if you have a drop of water or a gallon water or, I don't know, a huge room full in the middle of a flood type situation. I don't want to say a lake or an ocean because that's not necessarily pure water. But if you've got any amount of water, pure water, its density is one. That's because it's the mass divided by volume. When you calculate density, it's always mass divided by volume. So if you have 100 milliliters of water and you have 100 grams of water, so 100 grams divided by 100 milliliters is going to be one. It's just how it is. Um, any object's density is going to be its density. It has nothing to do with the size of it only. It's not because of one of those things. It's not if you have a bigger amount. It's something that it's internal. It's always going to stay the same. So continuing on with density, 
This is some calculations and some practice. You will do that on your own when you are watching the going through the PowerPoint and filling in your notes. You have to know how to calculate density. Here's a sample for you, so make sure you go through that. Here are some other intensive properties. Um, I just remembered I probably should have gone and talked more about phase change in color, and I skipped right over that. But we'll see. Maybe it's in the PowerPoint I need to look back over. So these are some other things. The temperature. It doesn't matter if it's big or small. The temperature will stay the same. If it's ductile, it's always going to be ductile. If it's malleable, magnetic the viscosity of something or the buoyancy of something. So these are all things that stay the same no matter how big or small the object is that you have. So for a little bit more detail, so temperature is intensive. It has to do with its surroundings, not the size. Remember, extensive is its size, intensive is not. This is about malleability and ductility. That's going to stay the same. Copper is copper is copper is copper. Copper has a certain malleability and a certain level of ductility. It can be put into wires, and so that doesn't change as long as it's copper. Same thing with magnetism. I'm going to skip right on over this so that because you have to do that on your own. Maybe I forgot about that. I'm going to pause. I should redo this, but I'm quite a few minutes in and I'm not going to. You have to give me a little bit of grace because I can only record and start these over so many times. So I love y'all, but I, I can only teach it um, the best I can. So viscosity, maybe you know stuff about viscosity. Maybe if you are in the car business or your family's in the car business or you like to work on cars, you know about the viscosity of different liquids. So there's motor oil has a measurement about its viscosity. Viscosity is how much it resists flowing. If it's a fluid, so anything that flows, if it's super, super thick like um, chocolate syrup or honey or something like that and it resists flowing, it's very high viscous. Water is very low viscous. If you heat it up, it becomes less viscous. If it's cold, it becomes more viscous. This is a graph that you need to understand that relationship between. When we're talking about buoyancy, buoyancy has to do with floating and sinking. Think about like in an ocean or a lake where you have buoys, and if you, it's spelled B-U-O-Y, like buoyancy, it's a buoy, it's something that floats. That is what we're talking about here. I'm going to pause for just a second to double check something. Okay, I apologize. So a, bu a buoyancy, oh, I said buoyancy, buoyancy, sorry. Buoyancy is when there's an upward force from the liquid acting on an object, and that's keeping it afloat. If it is positive, like here in the middle, if it is positive, it's going to float. If it's negative, that means it doesn't have much force pushing up on the object, so that means it's going to sink. If it is the same amount, it's going to be suspended. You have to know those different relationships just enough where it makes sense. And we have reached the end of these notes. So you need to make sure and go back and work through in your um, spiral and fill in all the information um, in that, I say spiral, the digital interactive notebook. So go through the PowerPoint, go through the practice problems, ask questions if you need it. There may be some things that it's going to ask you to answer questions through Pear Deck, um, if we can get that worked out, um, that will be there. And so just follow along and make sure that that is complete. And ask me and show up if you have any questions. Thanks.